Welcome back, guys! I'm here with another episode of Bible Q&A. Today we're discussing what is craftiness? Craftiness is basically trickery. Making people a part of our plans without them knowing. For example, Satan the devil is a very crafty person. He is able to enter God's institutions and mess them all up. Let's look at Numbers chapter 13 verses 27 to 33. His spirit entered ten spies and made them say the opposite of what Joshua and Caleb were saying. But Joshua and Caleb were saying righteous things. And since they got overwhelmed by the majority, that meant that Israel was believing the wrong thing. And this was bad. God got really mad. Joshua and Caleb were almost killed in Numbers chapter 14 verse 10, and God almost killed his plan with Abraham. Numbers chapter 14 verse 12 and Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3. God eventually acted so that all this stuff didn't happen, but in the process, hundreds of thousands of people would eventually just die in the desert, according to Numbers chapter 14 verses 36 to 37. And Satan did it again. Satan would convince Jeroboam to set up a new religion for the northern ten tribes in 1 Kings chapter 12 verses 26 to 33. Israel pretty much permanently lapsed into sin. In 2 Kings 17, their sin would cause God to destroy the nation. Where did all that idea of Jeroboam end up? The dustbin. Thankfully though, when Satan wanted to interfere with the kingdom of God in the New Testament, there was a problem. He was that guy in Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 to 30 who was sowing those bad seeds. But Jesus was able to deal with that. Jesus foiled Satan's plan. Jesus was crafty here. And we'll get to how good people can be crafty in just a minute. Thanks to Jesus' work, the kingdom of God is now poised to destroy all sin and death, according to Revelation chapter 20. God is going to rule over the entire universe. As it was said by St. Paul, And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 28 As you can see here, Craftiness isn't just about being evil, it's just about tricking people. Parents can tell their children, for example, that their favorite movie star is going to come to their house if they clean their room or something. That was a trick, but it was a trick for a good cause, to make the child do something good. We can do the same. We can trick people into becoming Christians. And God expects this from us. As Jesus said here, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. Matthew chapter 10 verse 16. We are in a world full of sin. So we need to be crafty about how we maneuver in this world. Now of course, how do we do this? Well, we just live righteous lives. As it was said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. We can also look at Romans chapter 14, verse 15, and Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. It doesn't sound very sneaky, does it? Well, think about this. Do these sinners know? that you, through your example, might be pulling some of them towards the faith? Do they know your motives behind what you're doing? I'd say it's pretty sneaky now. Jesus was doing the same thing all those years ago. He was showing an example to all, according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, and he was bringing people to God without them even really knowing. All they saw was this guy saying great stuff. My advice would be then to be crafty in God's favor. Don't spend time tricking people into giving you their money. No, work to trick people into coming to God. Because it can never be 
for a bad reason. If you bring someone to the faith, then it is only beneficial for their lives. Now, before I conclude, I want to say something very important. This is not about cheating people out of something they've worked hard to earn. This is not about trying to do something bad to people. This is not about misinforming people. This is simply about acting clever, using Satan's tricks for God's purposes. As it was said in Luke chapter 16 verse 9, And I say unto you, Make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. This is the conclusion of the parable of the unjust steward, who was a man who had lost his job because he wasn't very good at it. He went and started telling people that their debts were actually smaller than they were. So he was lying to them because, of course, he didn't have the power to change debts anymore. We don't actually want to lie to people, but we want to be clever. We want to use the resources of this world, the education, the money, to advance God's purpose. Satan has tricked people with education into thinking that they don't need God. And Satan has tricked people with money into believing that they can do anything with the cash they have. But we can use those same things to convince people of the existence of God. To tell people how God exists and what is happening in our world. And that is where I'm going to stop with this Bible Q&A. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe.